Hi, welcome to another video. So today I'm looking at the Yamaha DBR10. This is a, an active powered speaker. So I've liked Yamaha for a long time. I had one of their bikes back in 2001, I think it was, and I've got the Yamaha surround sound. So the specifications on the Yamaha has always been top notch. So like the Mackie Thumps, this Yamaha has DSP, Digital Signal Processing. Uh, I've stripped out the uh, the inside. This one's got a blown up power supply, but strip this front end down. Unfortunately, the digital signal processor, tiny little chip, size of your thumbnail, just under one of these boards. You can't actually see it without stripping all this down. So this one's got a blown switch mode power supply, so I'll give you a look. So there's the inputs. I've stuck some uh, stickers on here because it's got customers' details. And that's the mains input down there. So this is a look at the reverse. So that's your input. And it's all screened, obviously screening from the noise, from the you know, switch mode power supply. The DSP is all under here. And obviously the signal comes out here. Well, obvious to me anyway. Uh, having a look at the manual, there's some sort of reset there or something, and you can actually it can actually be updated uh, via Yamaha. So update the latest firmware. Um, main socket. So that's the mains filter. And in case you're confused, this stops the switch mode power supply noise getting back out onto the mains, not mains interference getting into the amp although I'm sure it does suppress a small bit. These are called common mode chokes. A couple of capacitors there, one over there. So I unscrewed this plate hoping to get a look at that DSP, but as I say, I took this cover off and you couldn't see the chip anyway. So here's the heatsink and the proper Yamaha engineering. That, look at that, locating lugs. Lock it down, a few screws, job done. And none of that heatsink compound, you got these. It feels like jelly, actually. This uh, heatsink material, that sits on there. So here's the board and the transistor sit underneath. But I haven't soldered them on yet. Here's two for the switch mode power supply. So that's all the switch mode power supply and you can see that line there, so that presumably means that's the hot side. This is obviously a lower voltage. So if I show you, so no PFC circuit, so that, that makes this more reliable than the Mackie straight away. Bridge rectifier, so rectifying the mains, doesn't look like there's any PFC. So we're 320 volts, and that driver there will drive those two FETs that sit there for the switch mode power supply. Not sure the voltage rail at the moment. So I was looking at these two coils over here. So if you're familiar with class D amplifiers, you will know that when you're switching the output, you get 400 kilohertz, roughly. Uh, the audio switch at 400 kilohertz and you have to take that 400 kilohertz out before it gets to the speaker. So I thought, why are there two coils? Had a look at the circuit drawing quickly and these two chips there, which are identical to the PV1600 amp. These are the same as the PV. These are 500 watt Class D amplifiers. So they've got 500 watts for the bass and 500 watts for the treble. That might be inverted, might be back to front. I think that's the treble and this looks like a heavier grade wire for the bass. But I could be wrong. So they're the drivers for the amplifiers for the bass and treble. Then turn the board over. So you've got two FETs. So you've got these two FETs for the switch mode power supply. These are actually rated at five or 600 watt volts for 21 amps. Well, so these two FETs, they're ST. Got a couple from Farnell yesterday. Uh, ST Microelectronics. 500 volt, but looking at 21 amp. So these are pretty reliable, 21 amps. But these are blown up. But what surprises me is the main fuse, which is on this board down here, 
I think someone must have changed it because the two original FETs were short circuit, I'll show you in a minute. And none of the drivers, oh, not sure if this driver is working, but the resistors and diodes uh, on the drive input to those FETs, none of them were blown up. So I'm hoping it's just those FETs. And if they're short circuit, something must have given. So I'm assuming the customer has already changed this fuse. Yeah, so back to the basin treble, 500 watts apiece, class D, and there the FETs for the base and treble, or vice versa. Uh, and these are 15 volt regulators. I think I saw a 7815, 7815, 7915, so that's negative 15, and another 7815. So presumably, they're driving different circuits that have got to be isolated from one another uh, or the circuits need more than one amp or one and a half amps so these are all regulators these are rectifiers i don't know the supply rail voltage yet but when i test it i'll, I'll have a measure so say base treble four regulators rectifiers and that's it So tidy circuit, I like it. In case you're looking at one of these, those ribbon cables from the input, you just lift these tags up. Lift the, lift, lift the ends up and gently slide the cables back in and then push them down to lock them. Nice piece of engineering. Right, so here's the old transistors I cut out. The markings on them are just a 28NM50. So as I say, 500 volt, 21 amp. These might be better than the existing Mackie ones. Right, so what I did, cut the legs off and then heated each pin and then pulled down the legs so as not to damage the track. But if I show you, got this on diode test. One on there, one on there. Hopefully you can see that. Dead short and dead short there one and two dead short I think there's, there's a couple of pound each right so what I'll now do I fit these new vets and cross my fingers, I'll put it all back together, cross my fingers, hope nothing else uh, explodes and hope it just turns on and works. More in a minute. Right, so I've screwed the board back down, put the ribbon cables in over here and then soldered these transistors, so those FET transistors. You can see the flux, I'm not gonna take the flux off because it will start washing all this pen, mark the ink. Um, so the, all that's left to do, is what I forgot to show you, is this case. This case sits over the top of that. This little plug sits onto the board and that plug plugs in to the cabinet which connects the tweeter and woofer. Uh, and there's a fan as well. Nice engineering, solid construction. Yamaha at its finest. That sits the other way. Well, I've just plugged this in. I thought I won't plug it into the uh, cabinet yet because I can see if this power light comes on. So there's the mains and nothing. No power. I'm assuming it's not that clever where it needs to see the impedance of the speakers. So nothing, back to the drawing board. Taken it apart. I'm on AC, so obviously check the mains coming in first. And you can see on the meter, hopefully, 231 AC. So which one? There's a good earth tab there. Right, so black is the live, which means white is in neutral. So we've got live and live and earth, oh sorry, yeah, live and neutral. See the bridge rectifier in there. And looking at the circuit drawing, 
these two fets we should have mains going on rectified mains going straight to the drain on this fet on this side trouble is I don't know which pin is the drain and I haven't downloaded the circuit drawing for that uh, fet but I can see in there, there's the neutral of the rectifier. So if you're doing this yourself, obviously be careful because there's, you know, once it's rectified and smooth, you've got 320 volts DC and these caps, if they don't kill you, they will give you a nasty bite. So I have got some insulators for these probes, but I'm not sure where they are. That's the mains there. So you've got to, you know, don't touch that obviously. So I don't know if you can see that on the camera. I'm on the neutral of the rectifier. Either negative and gently probe one of these FETs on DC. Nothing. Nothing. Very carefully without shorting it out. Nothing. So I've got no 300 volts here. Right, the mains comes in here. So I've got to look at this. So this relay is controlled by minus 15 A. So it's presumably a minus 15 volt regulator. I only saw one minus 15 volt. That's an analog ground. Diode across the coil to stop any back EMF flowing back down and destroying the, you know, what's driving it. So we've got live, so that really has to switch on to give us the live, but all the time it's not switched on, so no 15 volts. We get 240 volts through here into the rectifier. So if we draw any large amount of current, that would start heating up. But just to get the switch mode power supply going, we should be able to get, you know, see 240 volts here on this rectifier. And yeah, before it's even smooth, you'd see 240 volts on this FET. And I've got nothing. So I'm wondering, I hope not, because I've just put it back together and I haven't got one. Most likely cause, so when those FETs have gone short circuit, it would take out, presumably it would take out this resistor. 5 watt, 6.8 ohms. So I guess I'll have to undo the board, test the continuity of that. Yeah, I can't get to the rectifier to test the AC here. So I'll pull the board apart and check this. And here is that five watt resistor, probably a flame proof one. And that's the relay. And I don't hear this clicking. Obviously the switch mode power supply isn't running. So we've got no 15, negative 15 volts to pull this in to give us the mains. But without this coming in, we should still see voltage you know, across there and should see, you know, roughly mains voltage on these FETs. So that's uh, most likely suspect at the moment. Well, right, so two minutes later, I've just taken that board off. There's that resistor. Obviously there was some silicon holding it steady, but if I bring the light over, look at that. Someone's been at that. And you know, I repair these for, well, let's just say a customer. And so someone's been at this, they've already unsold it or maybe replaced it and not check these FETs, these were short circuit. So if something goes short circuit, something has to give. Uh, I'm surprised that none of the drivers or the driver stage for these were blown up. Uh, that's what usually happens on the Mackies. Maybe these Yamahas are just better built, but this looks like, well, you can see fresh solder on there. Someone's been at it. And I hate that. It's not even tidy soldering. So let's measure it. I think it said 6.8 ohms. So if I zoom out so you can see the meter. So I, the first time testing this resistor. Right, the meter's in shot. So resistance. We're looking for 6.8 ohms. Look at that. Open circuit. So touch the leads. 0.1. 
open circuit but someone has probably checked it and either not replaced it or it looks like it has been replaced because that is fresh flux on there so they've probably changed that and it's blown again uh, because these were short circuit I don't know how you see that square but anyway so that's blown so I've got to now order this 5 watt 6.8 ohm resistor you can see it runs at 142 degrees C or up to I'll try and get one of these from somewhere and hopefully that's all it is right so more information on this resistor what I didn't see on the main circuit let me just show you there so you've got capacitors these coils, common mode chokes uh, I think these are possibly transient suppressors anyway these are to suppress noise on the main, stop it coming back out of the amplifier but there's no inrush suppressor so let me show you what that is this one's actually from TME you can see in Poland this was off a switch mode power supply I built oh look, TME got this years ago now this is actually something, quite a hefty one uh, I think, I don't know, I forget the, uh, the current but this is suitable for the mains, it's 10 ohms and when you get an inrush of current i.e. all these capacitors act like a short circuit because they're discharged these draw a huge amount of current just for a few milliseconds while it's charging up or maybe quicker than that uh, so these act like a dead short so you get a massive inrush of current which is why the mains fuse is normally anti-surge but like, like the Mackie you have these inrush suppressors and as the current increases these get hot and then the resistance increases so it, it sort of levels out and reduces the maximum inrush well this 6.8 ohm resistor its resistance isn't really going to change significantly unlike this but as you try and draw more current through this the voltage drop across it is going to increase uh, so it's not quite as effective as an inrush limiter but but this is possibly in place of this inrush limiter or suppressor so that's definitely open circuit so I took it out and I thought what's all this crap on these legs and you can see here I don't know how good this camera is going to focus there is some through plating there it's just, oh, you saw it was already a mess so someone's taken it out, they haven't had sufficient heat on here and let the heat travel through the board they've just got it semi hot, pulled it out and to my horror it looks like they've been at it on this side because there's flux on this side I'm not sure if this camera will pick anything up at all but there is also a broken track on the top so I don't know if that's live or... Uh, yeah, so that will be the live so the life isn't going to come down to this relay anyway because the through plating is broken so once you solder the resistor on this side nothing is going to come up to this track so it's been buggered before I even start you can see a little through plating top has, has gone from this bin but there's no tracks on this side so it doesn't matter but there is a track here I'm not sure if the camera will focus I can hold this steady I mean I push this track back down with my pen but so someone's clearly had this resistor out there's flux here certainly not me it did look like this had been broken you saw the solder for yourself looked like someone had been at this whether this is a replacement or they took it out to test it but anyway it's buggered so when I whatever I fit here if I can't get one of these I'll just fit one of these and it will do, do the same job I have got some 5 watt resistors but not, not down at sort of 4, 5, 6 ohms 
Anyway, more later. Right, so I've replaced that open circuit resistor, 5 watt, 6.8 ohms, with this 10 ohm inrush limiter. I've uh, scratched off some of the solder resist and just used some hookup wire, bent that around the component leg and laid it flat and soldered it. Uh, if you haven't got any component wire, using component and chop chop the like, resistor leg off and wrap that around it. Uh, so that's a sign of not enough heat when they took that component out. And I'm going to put this back together and fingers crossed it's going to work. Right, so before I put this cover back on, I thought I might as well try it as it is. At least we should get some power lights. So I'm assuming the fifth, when this uh, switch mode power supply goes wrong, we lose the 15 volts. This relay should drop out and that resistor would then start dropping a load of voltage. But it would sort of act like a surge protector and hopefully give that fuse time to blow but maybe someone else has come along and changed this fuse and then pop that, something like that. Maybe I should check the value on this fuse. Make sure it's, oh, looks like the original fuse. See now it's got this blue ink everywhere. And this probably a 3.15 amp. No, the 6.3 amp. Um, sounds rather excessive. 6 amp, but it's got blue ink. Hmm, sounds rather a lot to me, if you ask me. I mean, the Mackies, which are a thousand watt, you know, they've got 3 amp. If you think about it, 3 amps, 240 volts, that's roughly 900 watts. So, you know, if, you, if you've if got a thousand watt amplifier, you need a thousand watts from the mains. So that 6 amps seems excessive. Maybe that's why that resistor popped. So I'm going to look for a 3 amp. Well, I found a couple of fuses, so if it's going to go bang, it's going to go bang with a 3 amp. So I've got a 2 point, oh, that's a 3.15 anti surge. That's what a 1000 watt Mackie has. This is a 2.5 amp. So I'm going to put this one in. I think it's a quick blow, but you know, 1000 watts when driven a full volume but we're not going to be really drawing any current or not much current maybe an amp to start up this uh, 10 ohm in rush limiter will limit the initial rush so let's get this mains lead and i'll let you see it for the first time so right it's turned off remember that live the live not sure if it goes to the switch first, then here, but just be careful if you're fixing one. It obviously got mains there. So I'll plug this in. Right, so we're live. And I'll let you watch this fuse. Oh, did you? You might have even seen it bend, and I just heard that relay click. And what have we got? Got power signal, that's not good. Or is that just the light? No, no signal. So D contour and power. Looks like it's good. Let me turn it off. Maybe you heard that relay click. Right, so that is with a two and a half amp fuse. But let me give you a closer look. Two and a half amp is not anti surge. So I'll keep quiet. I'll turn the switch on so you'll hear that main switch. And uh, you know, half a second later, you might hear this relay come in. But watch for this fuse to bend, which is the surge with those discharge capacitors, etc. Well, watch the fuse. Here goes.
No, it didn't bend that time because the capacitor is already charged up. Haven't fully discharged, but you might have heard the relay come in, so. And that inrush limiter, actually it's only just above room temperature. So let me let everything cool down and I'll show you this fuse. Right, so it's been two, three, four minutes. Hopefully the capacitors are discharged. The inrush limiter will have cooled down. As I want you to see that little two and a half amp fuse flex with a rush of current. Right, I'm gonna turn it on now. Hopefully you saw that. I saw it. And we've got our power light there. Right, so let me leave this on. Right, so that inrush limiter is gonna get at its hottest with the, yeah, the, the greatest rush of current, which is when you first turn it on. So if I touch that now, bearing in mind there's now 320 odd volts around the circuit, that limiter, it's hardly warm. So I think that will do a better job than that resistor. I'll just straighten up this capacitor. Uh, looking at these Rubicon, well, well they've spare, spared no expense with the brand of Rubicon, one of the best capacitors you can get. I oh, mean Panasonic are good as well, but Rubicon, 80 volts, 1200 microfarad. So there's four, so there'll be two for the plus, two for the minus. So it'll be pl probably plus and minus 75 volts, same as the Mackie. Wow, Rubicon, nice. And let's see, the look, even the mains filter, mains smoothing capacitors, Rubicon again. Only 85 degrees C, mind you, that's, yeah, the amp's not gonna get much hot on that. Don't forget, this mains here, so I'm trying to avoid touching them. Yeah, so Rubicon, th these become expensive with a uh, high volt. So they'll be 400 or 450 volt. Oh, it's looking like a thousand microfarad. Can't really see. So they're 85 degrees C. These are probably 75, 85. As you'll see an 85 in here. So it's all 85 degree caps. I think these brown ones might be 105. Next to that transformer, maybe not. Oh yeah, that's 105. So why pick 105 there? Yep, these are 85. Yamaha obviously know what they're doing. I've got no doubt the Yamaha engineer or whoever built this designed it for them. They're a better engineer than I am. I'm not into PCB design, just repair. But yeah, I would have had a second thought about putting a resistor there. And that fuse looked original. Six amps, too much for a thousand watt amp. If something's gonna go wrong, it's going to you know, destroy more components before that fuse blows. So I'm gonna put this cover back on. That looks awfully like the Mackie plug, the speaker plug. But as I said, yeah, that plugs down onto the board, into that plug there. I'm not sure what these, I don't know if these take out noise or something. Look like, I don't know if they're, yeah, that's a mini coil down the back there. Coils there. Uh, that fan, once you screwed it down, that plugs in through there, which is just over on the corner of the board here. Clever design, I like it. And then, of course, fully shielded. Nice. Insulated there to stop the mains uh, wiring rubbing on the main switch. Cool. Hi, right, so I was wrong about the wattage. Look, I, I thought it was a thousand watts, because yeah, most of these baby speakers are. 700 watts, class D amplifier. Good amplifier, no expense spared. Uh, digital signal processing. Uh, with regards to that, if you think you haven't seen one before, this is a Mackie thump. 
this I think it's got a bigger driver but this contour and everything so high uh, medium and low volume that is done with a digital signal processor the tops missing this was actually blown up and I've had to bypass this uh, 24 bit stereo codec encoder and decoder uh, then goes to a processor at the top this is now no longer available for the Mackie Thump so I'm actually having to make my own crossover so if you're, if you're thinking about buying a second hand Thump 12A and 15A don't because you can't get the spares anymore bloody crap yeah there's a switch made power supply little uh, amplifier chip under the board and then the normal tweeter your TDA chip 100 watt driver for the uh, tweeter uh, mains filter and as I say it's digital front end no longer available so beware I wouldn't buy any second end thumps because if you need the front end that's it a scrap can't get it anymore so hopefully this has given you some insight into repairing or at least look at the Yamaha DBR10 I think it's just a 10 inch driver sounds nice thank you for watching